Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Department of Truth oversized hardcover from Image and I'm very excited to get into this one. So without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Here is the cover of the book, which I think has a really, really unique style to it. Also, there's no dust jacket or anything like that, like there usually isn't with these image hardcovers, just so you know. And here is the spine of the book with that perfect volume one, which means we'll hopefully get a volume two. And then here is the back of the book, which gives some more information on everything that's going on in here. All right, so this oversized hardcover collects, quite simply, the Department of Truth series, issue one through 17 by James Tinian. And this is the first story or comic that I've ever read from Tinian, and I have to say, uh, I'm very, very excited now to check out Something is Killing the Children, because I know he's very well known for that, and I absolutely loved the Department of Truth. This story was wonderfully put together, wonderfully researched. I love the artwork, which is primarily done by Martin Simmons, and it is the kind of artwork that just grabs you by the head, pulls you in close, and forces you to pay attention to it, and it's just so captivating. It reminds me of Bill Sienkiewicz in a way. There are a lot of surrealist aspects to it. It's just beautiful and it really does a lot to uplift the story, I think, too. But see, I'm excited and I'm getting ahead of myself. What is the Department of Truth? Well, this comic follows the journey of a man named Cole Turner, who previously was very into studying and researching conspiracy theories and sort of the origins of them and the historical context built around them. And he ends up getting recruited into this secret organization that investigates and and combats conspiracy theories, but there's a really specific reason this government organization exists, and it is the core concept of this story is that belief shapes reality, and the Department of Truth works to maintain a status quo by debunking or suppressing any sort of dangerous fringe conspiracy that can manifest itself into a real phenomena if enough people believe in it. So it's sort of the power of collective conscious to make manifestations of reality. And so in this book, they go really in depth about a lot of conspiracies and about a lot of the history around those conspiracies and sort of come up with explanations for how those formed at the time, why there was the purpose of those being formed at the time, and how the elite used that information to manipulate and suppress marginalized groups. So of course we see things in here like Kubrick directed the moon landing, the world is flat, even Cole's own past is tied with the satanic panic and that's actually sort of a crucial part of the plot and a crucial reason why the Department of Truth is interested in him and why the Black Hats, which are the opposing group in here, are interested in him as well. And this is a very, very contemporary book because at its core, it is about the psychological impact of misinformation and sort of the broader implications of truth and deception in society and how we parse through information to find those things. And there's really two things going on in this book that take up the majority of the page and that is one of course the natural narrative that is moving the plot forward sort of Cole's individual struggle for truth but then there is also the broader socio-political implications of conspiracy theories and what that misinformation can do to a society and what that misinformation has done to societies in the past so you may be thinking that this book sounds pretty political and yeah, that's because it is. It serves as a reflection of the political landscape, and it delves into conspiracy theories, the manipulation of truth like we talked about, the consequences of, of misinformation, and it just touches upon all those issues that are deeply, deeply intertwined with politics. And I know there are those people out there, and I know this probably isn't most of you watching my channel, but I always just feel the need to say it, and I know you've likely heard it before, but when we talk about a book like this that is so much more overtly political, I think it's important for me to say that for those who do prefer to separate politics from comics, uh, it's kind of crucial to recognize that the very nature of art, which comic books are art, is kind of inherently political, and engaging with the political dimensions of these works allows us to have a richer understanding of the social commentary that they offer, and the potential for meaningful discussion about, like, the world we live in. Like, I think sometimes people don't understand that even comic books, comic books especially, can be powerful vehicles for social commentary. And not even social commentary, also cultural expression. And I think I did kind of mention this 
but a lot of this book, a lot of it is about sort of the psychological effect of these conspiracy theories or the psychology of certain areas, certain demographics, certain types of people that were the ones who sort of pushed these uh, conspiracy narratives forward. So for example, there's a point in the book where they're talking about the Obama conspiracy theory that, you know, says, oh, he wasn't actually born in America. He was born in, I think the theory like attributes it to Kenya or, or something like that. And they sort of talk about why people come up with theories like that. And in this instance, their explanation that they put out in this book is that when people saw Barack Obama as president or as a presidential candidate, people already had an idea of what presidents looked like in their head. And they presuppose that a lot of people that the idea of Obama as president didn't fit that and it made them uncomfortable. And that unsettled them on sort of a subconscious level. And then it says that, you know, if someone puts out an answer out there to why they feel uncomfortable, for example, this theory that he wasn't born in the USA, he was born somewhere else, it doesn't matter if that is factually incorrect because it gives them a reason to feel that discomfort that they can sort of justify and say, well, I'm not racist. There's an actual reason I feel uncomfortable. And this is used as an example in the Department of Truth because they're talking about how these can sort of snowball this misinformation because if a lot of people start thinking, well, I'm just want someone who is in the know as opposed to all these others, and they start getting more and more people in the know, in this reality, it would start to change the way the world works and it would retcon history even. So, for example, it could change if enough people le believed it, it could actually make it so Obama was born somewhere else outside the U.S. instead of where he was actually born in the U.S. And you know, like I said earlier, there must have been just a god-like level of research involved in this book because it's almost like Tinian took this idea of those thoughts being manifested into reality and reality being way more fickle than it is and controlled by collective consciousness and he went back in time to ancient civilizations started there and moved forward through history with this idea present. So in this, there's a lot of deconstruction about sort of like, you know, paganism, Christianity, just sort of like the, the World War II era, the history of the US and the foundation of all that. It's just nuts, all the stuff that they went into. And I actually learned a lot too about certain people, like names that are, you know, thrown out there, but we don't think too deeply about like Al Crowley, things like that. And I'm trying to give you a a lot of information about the book so you can kind of get a feel for it without me actually giving you too much information about what the actual narrative is and what Cole Turner's sort of purpose and investigation is about because I think all of that is done so exceptionally well in this story that it's almost like plot twist after plot twist but maybe it's really just a slow drip of information but each drip that we get is just so invigorating that it makes you want to just keep reading turn the page get to the next issue another plot twist Twist, turn the page, another plot twist, so on and so forth. It's just so, so good. Really, really one of the best books of the year for me. But I'm somebody who is also, you know, I'm, I'm interested in political discussions. I'm interested in sort of deconstruction of religion and the historical context of them. I'm just interested in, you know, human psychology and the historical context of how human psychology has shaped the world we live in today. I'm interested in spirituality and mysticism and how that also is involved with human psychology for explaining the world around us. All of that is in here. And if you are, you know, a fan of even one of those little subcategories, then you're going to get a lot from this book, I think. Even cryptids and things like that. I mean, I used to live in West Virginia, and if you aren't unfamiliar with sort of some of the lore of West Virginia, one of our cryptids there is the Mothman, who I think is a pretty popular one, so I think most people would know about him. But this story actually sort of provides an explanation for the origin of the Mothman, and there's other cryptids in here too. I mean, they mentioned Big Foot. They mention why the Yeti exist, things like that. All right, guys, like I said, I highly recommend this one. It's one of the best books of the year for me. So please let me know if you've read it, what your thoughts are, if you're planning on picking it up, or maybe if the story sounds interesting to you or not. Whatever your thoughts, please leave a comment below. Let me know. Don't forget to like and also subscribe. And thank you all and have a great rest of your week.